scope and object-oriented programming. In the previous example, we had the following code. Highlighted in red, we have our counter variable j. This counter variable must be declared before the loop, but let's dive in and see why. Let's take a look at the code below. In this example, we have a variable x that is declared above the for loop. Therefore, we can access and modify this variable inside the for loop and then print it out after the loop has finished. X is visible inside the red box. However, if we declare the variable inside the loop, every time that the loop starts over, X is reset to a value of 3, so it won't keep a proper count. The compiler error that occurs means we won't be able to print X after the loop is over, since X is only visible inside of the for loop. So if we declare X here, then it's only visible inside this red box, which means we can, once the curly brace is ended and we're outside of the loop, we cannot see this variable anymore. It's not visible. This visibility is referred to as the scope. The scope of a variable is the part of the program where you can access the variable. As we progress in this course, it's very important to always keep scope in mind when declaring variables. Let's go through a few problems together for practice. Consider the code below. What will the value of x be at the end of the program? What values will the array hello hold at the end of the program? The value of x will be 2 at the end of the program. We've declared x to be equal to 0 here, and then each time this loop runs, it increments x by 1, and this loop runs exactly two times. What values will the array hello hold at the end of the program? Hello friend with exclamation marks, because inside this same for loop, every time we go through it, we access a different element in this array, and we add an exclamation point to the end. Here you can see we've changed the code a bit. Instead, we've printed i here instead of x. What will the value of i be at the end of the program? Well, there will be a compiler error because the scope of i is only inside of the for loop. Since i is no longer visible once the loop is completed, we cannot print it. 